everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Um, today, I would like to talk to you a little bit about Wren and show us our little adventure up to the Children's Hospital where we visit at least once a week at this point <laughs> for some kid or another, typically Wren. Um, Wren has um, this really strange condition that um, we're trying to get to the bottom of and we needed to see a dermatologist. It has been a six month wait to get in with a dermatologist. If anyone has a kiddo who's needed to see a child, <laughs> a child's dermatologist, then you know what I'm talking about. They are booked solid for months. But um, she, well, let me back up. When we adopted her, uh, they gave us this hour long talk about everything wrong with Ren. And it was overwhelming. It was all in Ukrainian. We had an interpreter who's sitting there interpreting, sometimes having to use his phone to try to come up with the correct interpretation, which was not always correct. And they gave us so much overwhelming amounts of information about stuff we did not know she had. Because when we were going over there, we thought she had three conditions. We went over there and they gave us like 20 diagnoses and we were just floored. And some of them didn't even make sense. Like they said she had hydrocephalus. The term they kept using was compensated hydrocephalus. This girl has the tiniest head ever. She actually officially has a microcephaly diagnosis here in America. So I'm looking at this girl going, no, she has microcephaly, she doesn't have hydrocephalus. What are you talking about? Um, but they told us all these things. And one of the things that they had told us was that Ren was allergic to the sun. And we were like, allergic to the sun, what does that mean? They said, she gets horrible blisters from the sun. And we're like, like a sunburn? And they said, no, like, um, her skin just, it breaks out in horrible sores from the sun. And we're like, wow, that sounds freaky. So we get back to America in the middle of winter. Well, it was spring in April. And, um, uh, we find out that one of the diagnoses they had told us, which is a big deal diagnosis and uh, pretty easy to test for a diagnosis. They said she had, um, hep C. We tested her here and she didn't. And I had specifically asked during this whole long hour where they're telling us all this stuff and we're talking to doctors and psychologists and I asked about the hep C. I said, um, does she actually have hep C or did she just test positive at birth like from the moms um, having it? And they said, no, 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 she actually has it. She's been tested recently. And I said, but she's not being treated. And they're like, no. So I'm like, that's puzzling because you know, a kid that has had hep C since birth should, is not been treated, would be generally sick, jaundiced, have other issues. But um, we tested her right away because we were worried she would need to get treatment right away, but she did not have hep C. We tested with like the gold standard test here and they were like, mm, nope, this girl does not have hep C. So since they missed such a big thing, since they were incorrect about such a big thing, I um, honestly blew off a lot of what they said. <laughs> so, Fast forward, what was that? One month from her being home and it's a lovely sunny day and the kids play outside for a long time. Now it was Oregon and I'm a redhead. So um, my kids rarely get sunburns because I'm very careful about how much time they spend in the sun. We use, we cover our skin. We um, only stay in the sun for a certain amount of time. We uh, use sunblock, but uh, she had been playing outside on a spring day in Oregon and uh she went to bed just kind of complaining being uncomfortable the next morning she woke up and she had these bumps all over so her skin started off just with little bumps and then within 24 hours it was horrible blisters that were painful and itchy and were on every bit of skin that had touched the sun you could see the line where her shirt was and every bit of skin that was exposed to the sun was just blistered and hurting and itching and she couldn't even sleep. So with all these rashes that she's having, now she's even having them in winter. Uh, we are still waiting to talk to the dermatologist, but I keep, you know, taking pictures of rashes so that I can show them to the dermatologist. Well, so here we are going to the dermatologist today to find out what on earth is wrong with uh, Ren's skin because um, there are multiple kinds of sun allergies and we don't know um, if it's like the UV light itself, if it's the sun, if it's um, something that she can get through like a window or if it's something that she only gets in direct sunlight, if it's something that sunscreen helps or doesn't help, um, if 
this is something she'll outgrow. If this is something, there's one kind of uh, sun allergy that's caused by like um, too much excessive hemoglobin in the blood, uh, which is crazy. But um, there's just a bunch of different reasons why your skin can react like this. And we need to get to the bottom of why she's reacting like this. So her rashes were um, just continuing. She had them all the time. Uh, anytime just walking from the car to Walmart, uh, she would get more breakouts, like more bumps. And um, it slowly faded out as uh, we were very careful about her going in the sun. And then as the season progressed and we go into fall and then winter, and then it's only like an occasional spot here or there. But in December, she had played out in the snow for like all day. But it wasn't even sunny that I had noticed. But she busted out in a full new rash again. And that was just, oh, another very painful and itchy mess for her. Even though it was just playing in the snow and not summer sun, same blistering rash. I took her to her pediatrician and he was absolutely baffled. Today we are taking Ren here up to um, the Children's Hospital for a long waited for dermatology appointment to figure out why Missy Moo here is allergic to the sun. To figure out uh, more about her sun allergy and her skin's reaction to the sun. If there's anything we can do to help it because it is pretty brutal and she likes playing outside and right now she can't. So uh, hopefully we get some answers in there. We really got our fingers crossed. It's taken like six months to get her into the dermatologist. So best of luck to us. <laughs> I'm taking a video of you, so. Yes, yeah, so um, What are we doing here? Why are we here today? Um, For what doctor? What is the doctor? So, doctor, check my, my face. Yes, your face. Right. Up you go. Yeah, sit down. Sit down, Missy Moo. I'll be in in a minute, so look at your skin. Look. Yes, you look so cute. <laughs> so, hey, after our lovely trip to the doctor, it was actually really nice. There was two dermatologists that came in. Super friendly. Really great. I just love the doctors and nurses at Akron Children's Hospital. I have been overly impressed by everyone I've met there. They take so much time to really like explain things to the parents and they're so good with the kids. Like they interact with the kids like they're real people, not like they're just, you know, little lumps on a log. And I hate when doctors do that, ignore kids, especially kids with developmental disabilities. But no, these, these doctors were great. Interacting with Ren, just having fun with her and uh, spent a lot of time looking through my photos of her skin and looking at her skin. And the funny thing is the doctor noticed that she had a cold sore and he asked if she got cold sores a lot. And I said, she gets them all the time. Like a lot of kids from Ukrainian orphanages, they are just riddled with cold sores. Like these kids just are all covered in cold sores when you go there, it's crazy. Like they do nothing to prevent it. And the kids, you know, don't even wash, know how to wash their hands. So they all just pass it to each other. And it has been a constant battle to teach Ren to not um, share cups, to not um, touch her cold sore and then touch other things. And actually one of my kids has gotten a cold sore now. And we had had no cold sores in our house, which was, which was great. And now I've got one of my kids has caught cold sores from Ren, which is really unfortunate. But um, we've kept it mostly away from most of the kids and we've taught Ren how to, you know, not touch anything. But anyways, I digress. The doctor knows she had a cold sore and asked about that and asked how often she gets them. I say she gets them all the time. And he, you know, kind of was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. He gets on, he types on some stuff. He talks to the doctor. Then he pulls up stuff on his computer and he said, look, so it's one of two things. One is um, polymorphous light eruption multiform. Uh, which means sun allergy and multiform means uh, it can show up in different, like the rash can look different on different people. Some people it looks like hives. Some people it looks like Ren where it's like blisters and, uh, and it can look like a mix of those. Uh, and that was, you know, the basic sun allergy. So that was what we, you know, the most likely. And then the other one he said is uh, rare, but, um, it was definitely something we should consider after looking at the pictures of her hands that I showed him. He said that it's called um, versus erythema multiform. And it is the photo distributed type. 
So he said what this is, is in her case, the herpes virus, um, every time she pops out with a cold sore, her if, if this is what she has, it's very rare, and um, now I'll get to how we would diagnose it in a minute, but let me explain it. And basically, her body, her immune system overreacts to the to the herpes, and then it just floods her whole body with blisters. But it's only on on her body where the sun hits her. So it's not. It wouldn't be a sun allergy, but it's a sun reaction. The virus reacts, her immune system reacts with these blisters that look kind of like herpes blisters that are all over any of her skin that touches, that the sun touches. So the the first one, the polymorphic light eruption, the sun allergy, the treatment for that, there is no treatment. She doesn't grow out of it. Uh, there's just prevention. So it's uh, staying out of the sun. It's covering her skin. These are things that we already do. Giving her vitamin D supplements because she'll never get enough vitamin D from the sun, which already we already do. Um, and he actually said, because I asked him, well, does sunscreen like help or not? Because, um, you know, when the stuff I'm reading, there's some that it doesn't and some that it doesn't. And he said, he said it does, but I don't want her using the chemical sunscreens. I want her using um, the stuff that's mineral based. So either zinc or titanium or both. And I want it 50 uh SPF or above. So no, no spray, you know, this is that the <laughs> greasy white stuff that, um, the mineral stuff that, um, physically blocks, you know, the UVs from your skin. He wants her to use that kind. So he said, I want her to use it anytime she goes in the sun and, you know, she needs a big hat. She has like four, she needs long sleeves. She needs to, and so do all that. And he's like, now for the other thing that it could be I can test for it, but I can only test by doing a, um, a, uh, biopsy and I'm not going to cut her face. So, cause right now she has, you know, a couple of little bumps on her face, but, um, when she gets an explosion, when she gets a bad, she gets them on her hands. And so he said, if she gets them on her hands again, that if I come in, he can numb it and cut a little bit of one and then they can test it. And then he would know for sure if it was the, um, versus erythema, uh, or if it was just the, uh, sun allergy, but barring that, even if we don't test for that, what he wanted to do was, uh, put her on the antivirals that you typically take for herpes, uh, for constant, you know, chicken pox, um, not chicken pox, herpes, um, cold sores or, um, other kinds of herpes that it's the same stuff. It's like a liquid for kids. That's an antiviral that you take. I forget what it's called but he wanted to put her on it for three months because um, he wants to see if she has any breakouts, these full skin breakouts, if she's taking this stuff. And I was totally fine with it because I'd already uh, contemplated talking to her doctor about putting her on antivirals just because of the constant cold sores that I have to uh, just, it's, it's a huge hassle in my day to try to remind her constantly not to touch it and not touch things. And um, to keep her it clean and to put like the Abreva on it, which is very expensive. And so I said, you know, antivirals, let's, what's the, <laughs> what are the side effects? And the side effects were very minimal as long as you don't stay on them for a long time. And he only wanted, he wants to try her for three months and see how she does. Um, so if she doesn't have any major sun reactions, then there won't be any testing needed to be done. We won't need to do a biopsy um, because we'll assume, yes, this is what she's got um, going on. And um, basically she'll cycle on and off of it throughout her life to keep her um, from, you know, having these horrible outbreaks that she has. So that's where we're at right now is basically, you know, sun protection for Ren. She takes antivirals twice a day and um, we see how this works. And the funny thing is within 24 hours of two doses of that antiviral, her cold sore was completely gone and her other bumps were already clearing up. Like she just looked so much better. I was amazed by how fast that happened. So hopefully it's, um, it's going to work because I would love this poor little girl to not be having these painful, itchy bumps on her skin because it's just not, not fair for her. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll let you know um, how it turns out. So thanks. So look at the camera. <laughs> Everybody, let's go!